This video is about why I think that everything about base layers is pretty much marketing bullshit. I'll get into the kind of dogma first. The rules as we're taught of layering is number one, never use cotton. And I'm not gonna say that we should use cotton. So let's just get that out of the way first. What we're told is that you don't wanna wear cotton and that you wanna wear some kind of synthetic or wool material up against your skin all the time that wicks moisture away from your skin so that you stay dry and warm. And from there, you should add other layers depending on how cold it is and so forth. The whole notion of wicking moisture away from your skin, in my mind, is, is completely false. Before I can really explain why I think that's not true and what is actually happening and why you want to layer a certain way in cold weather, I'll kind of break down, first of all, what fabrics are out there and why we use them. So really there's two types of fabrics, synthetic and natural. Natural is basically either from animals or from plants. I'll start with cotton, which is kind of the fabric that everyone knows. Cotton is basically a polymer of glucose that when it's linked together is called cellulose. Plants are, are kind of this one trick pony. They make almost everything that is in them structurally out of cellulose. Now there's, there's, there's variations on it. Cotton is essentially pure cellulose with nothing else. Other plant fibers like bamboo and stuff like that just needs to be processed more because it'll have more components in it. But basically anything from plants is made from cellulose. The other natural materials come from animals and animals are also kind of one trick ponies also. You can either have things like leather or wool. Leather is basically layers of epidermal cells that contain a lot of keratin. Keratin is a protein. And then things like wool that are also a specific type of keratin fiber. So it's a protein. Proteins are made up of 20 different amino acids. Every protein is made of those 20 different amino acids in different sequences, different lengths. The sequence dictates how the protein comes together and its physical and chemical properties. Nature is a pretty uh, clever thing. It's come up with a specific type of fiber for animals to keep them warm. And that's the wool fibers in their fur. Now there's the complete other class, which are synthetics, basically made from fossil fuels. So they're oil derivatives. They have engineered properties. You can just think of the common names, polypropylene, polyester, nylon. These are all polymers of specific compounds that come together that we can transform into fabrics. When it comes to the clothing itself, what we're always told is that you want a base layer that wicks moisture away from your skin. Think about that word for a second, wick. What does wick mean? Wicking is basically a movement of liquid uh, through capillary action. So there has to be some kind of force at play. Now, true capillary action is when liquid moves based on the, the surface tension force overcoming the force required to, to actually pull the, the liquid against gravity. In a fabric, it's not, I, wouldn't, I don't think it's really capillary action. I, I think it's more fibers either like water or don't like water, hydrophilic or hydrophobic. Just think about this for a second. What is one of the best wicks out there? It's cotton. Cotton is an amazing wick. I've got to just say this again. Cellulose is a polymer of glucose. It's not soluble. It's insoluble because of its structure. But it does like water. It doesn't repel water. It doesn't dissolve, but it doesn't repel water. It actually likes water. It, it, it stays hydrated. And because of that, it's an excellent wick. It loves to hold water. So what does all that mean practically? Well, from my point of view, if you have a piece of cotton clothing and you sweat, it's going to grab that moisture and hold onto it and get saturated. And it's not going to want to let go. Everyone knows this. If you take a, a cotton t-shirt and soak it, squeeze it out, it's going to retain a lot of water. Not only that, it's going to take a long time to dry. And that's because it's holding on to those water molecules. Now, if you take a synthetic material, like a fleece, and you soak it with water and you squeeze it out, it's going to hold on to less water and it's also going to dry a lot faster because it doesn't like water. In my mind, you want a base layer that doesn't wick at all. You want it to dislike water. The million dollar question, and I think it's literally a million dollar question or a billion dollar question is 
where did the notion of wicking come from? The way I see it is that there was a couple of people in a boardroom. They had made some long johns out of a new material and they actually worked really well. And they were like, we got to figure out how to sell these. Like if we can get these selling, we're going to make a ton of cash. No one's interested in long johns. They're brainstorming. And then one of the guys says like, well, why, why is it that like it works so well? Another guy looks at him and goes, well, it's, it's because it's so hydrophobic. It basically repels water. That's just not a good marketing strategy. You know, light bulb, what does everyone hate? And they're like, well, they just hate feeling wet. It's uncomfortable. So what are you going to do? Let's, let's just say that it moves the water away from you. And how does it do that? It, it, it wicks it away from you. When it comes to marketing, negatives are bad. You wanna say positives. You wanna say that it does something. Think of the diagrams that explain how Gore-Tex works. It's got these arrows and what's happening is the water is moving through. And if you look at the diagrams for base layers, it's the same thing. It's little arrows showing the moisture just going away and making you happy and warm. Complete marketing, just saying, that the product was doing something that people wanted it to do. People wanna feel dry, so you say that it makes you feel dry. So not only did they come up with this notion of wicking, there is also just a whole concept of a kind of systematic and almost scientific name to it. Long johns don't sound sexy. What sounds sexier? Something like a base layer. So you come up with a system that you can market to people well, whenever you go outside, you need to start with your base because you want to buy our long johns or our, our thermals or whatever you call them. To me, they're just a layer of insulation. So what does all that mean in terms of what you actually do when you go outside? The key of staying warm, especially when you've got moisture, is having some kind of physical separation and some kind of fiber that retains air pockets even with moisture in it. Your body is hot and there's some moisture. And what you want to happen is that moisture to move away from you in the form of vapor and then have a material that doesn't absorb water, has some kind of structure to it that has air pockets so that it stays warm and insulates you a little bit. The dry feeling is because of the structure of the fabric. This is pretty much my action system for the winter in a lot of conditions. I start always with a merino t-shirt and merino underwear. That's the, my first layer and that's just because I like to have a layer that I can, you know, if I need to take off my outside layers and not be completely exposed to the elements. On top of those two merino pieces of clothing, I have some grid stop fleece ultralight layers. So this is a grid stop fleece hoodie and I have a grid stop fleece uh, pants both give me a little bit of warmth. The outside layer is just soft shell So I have a soft shell grid uh, Jacket on top from Eddie Bauer and uh, soft shell pants from Patagonia These are really old pants. The soft shell also has a grid style pattern It means that I can take off my hoodie and just wear the soft shell in certain conditions and it still keeps me warm So these two together are, are pretty thin and they work well in a lot of conditions. That's basically my sort of philosophy to use layers of fleece to adjust to the temperature for your clothing that you're doing your activity in. From there, I add layers to the outside. When I stop, I'll, I have a, a thick insulating jacket and that's just to add that real warmth when you don't have as much output from the activity that you're doing. Then the whole other question is, is wool. I wish they made more textiles that were similar to the grid stop. A grid stop merino fleece would be amazing. It would be really pricey. So that's the main difference is that wool is a natural fiber that evolved to do kind of what we engineered synthetics to do. Um, but at a certain point, the fleece is just a more cost effective way to get that hydrophobic and structured fabric that helps you stay warm when you're sweating and it's cold out.